now 7 meeting 745 so i'm going to call to order the committee meeting for um building assessments and it is 745 not the time for the clock okay okay so the um i don't have the agenda right in front of me but i'm pretty sure all it is is to discussion. the discussion okay yeah, yeah. um so I feel a little better after you talk to them. Um, the you know seeing them in per person and, and hearing the uh, that they hire um, someone specifically for the mechanicals. Yeah, because architects um, aren't the same people who know the nuts and bolts, and I tend to trust the nuts and bolts people to to do that. So the fact that they you know have broader expertise makes me feel a little bit better. That was the one thing I was looking for. So the fact that. I didn't pull that out of the initial right. release of the idea. Um, I don't know. I wasn't really blown away with anything. Like, it's a tough thing to say because the, what really hampers this is we only have one response. So there's nothing to We're not compare. doing a comparison. So right. I think the question is was there a red flag that made you think that they couldn't do what we were asking them? No, I don't think that they can't do what we're asking. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just I'm very much on the fence between going through with it and sending it that out. Like, I, I I can't I can't quite put it into words. I, I I really can't identify why, but it's I don't know. Okay, so I'm not sitting right right now. Okay, so, that's all. Donna, did you have thoughts? Um, I've heard that they're a reputable firm. So I'm not questioning their integrity. Um, what I was hoping for mm -hmm. was for somebody to do a physical assessment of our structures as they stand now mm -hmm. and say, you've got two years left on your roof. Your windows need to be replaced in this. You the chimney, the pointing, the, the, the actual physical, um, the envelope of the building, the, the uh, mechanicals of the building, mm -hmm. and not get hung up on um, a whole lot of changes. My, my, my big concern is that the buildings are safe that we're preserving the assets as they are, that we're not going to get more emails about plumbing that's exploded and no way to shut it off. Um, you know, there's things that can be done to make it more accessible. Um, what I don't want to do is go down a route where they're going to come back and tell us that we have to get everything to the walls and we're, we're kind of back at the same spot. You know, I want to make sure that we can fix what we've got. I'd love to see um, additional electrical outlets to provide for the, the you know, that kind of stuff. Um, when they talk about, you know, sitting down and discussing stuff with the staff, I think you've been to that rodeo already. And we know what the staff would like to see. You've had multiple conversations. You're aware of um, changes in furniture or kinds of uses, multi-uses of space in that way. I don't think we need them to tell us that stuff. I will say that I was impressed with the picture that they showed of the hallway, of the before and after of that hallway. Um, so there may they may have insight into some flexibility that we're not aware that of. Have, like I would I would have thought to redesign that hallway at all. Like like that was that was a yeah, sure, sure level of creativity with paint that and floor tile that I wouldn't have no, thought and, of. So and, and so it mentioned moving walls. Yeah. And He's and, and so, that. so so <laughs> so when you start moving walls. I think that we might end up in a situation that isn't so good for us. Um, it's been a long time since I've been in either school. If I remember correctly, center school hallways were pretty wide. So they may already have the flexibility 
to do something like that if it's a matter of changing some carpeting or floor tiling to designate an area. But we also have to be aware that they're as wide as they are and there's the whole fire safety thing. You know, you start store putting fun stuffed furniture in a hallway <laughs> in, in an area of a hall that's sure. not used a lot, yeah, yeah. we may end up having a fire safety code. It's violation. one of the reasons I like the fact that they're focused on education buildings. Then, you know, I'd be worried if, somebody, if we had somebody who like in hotel design, you know, and, and a broad array of types of things, they have no idea about what schools need or don't need or are required. Because you're right, the requirements are different. Are, are, are a little different. Yeah. One of the things, in the RFP that I was reading where it says, you know, um, district learning spaces should include. So as a mom, when I tell my child they should do something, that is a nice way of saying that it must happen. Right? <laughs> uh -huh. As an accountant, when I say should, it's strongly recommended, right? But I would like to think that this should means we'd like it, it would be nice, but we may not get it. And I think that we need to be careful in making these definitions clear, not only for ourselves so that we're on the same page, but for the public and for anybody who might be helping us. Because my initial reading of this should, and I'm looking at all this stuff and I'm like, this is what we just voted down. Why is this here again? Um, and somebody pointed out that my should and the should may not be the same. So I think we need to um, have those conversations and then whatever the definition is and how we um, look at it, just so that we're, so we are just all using the same I thought, language. I thought his point was important, though, that there are decisions that are for the board to make, right? That that they're, they can give us a set of, of suggestions and projects. And I would hope they wouldn't just walk away and come back in six months and say, OK, here's your projects. It sounded like it was a little bit more back and forth and iterative, right? In terms of, you know, we do this, and then we have a meeting, and you know you tell us, yeah, you guys are way off base here. Or, you know, we want a real focus on this, or can you divide these into two? Or, you know, so it seems like there's a bit of an iteration process with the way they would develop the projects before they come back and say, you know, this is the, the projects that, um, you know, we saw going together based on the input we had from the board. And okay, board, now here you go. You have to figure out the, you know, and here's the bottom line price tag. You have to figure out the next step. So they're just giving us information. They're not saying that you must include this unless they say you must include this if you want state reimbursement or you must do it this way because of fire code. I don't think they're going to go on any of these things that we must include any of those things. No. But for example, they might say, since you're going to broaden this hallway anyway, you might as well do this you know, spend an extra 20 bucks and get this value out of it. So I would hope that there would be an explanation with any of these things about what the value is. But are and we, well, to help us make decisions, because all they're doing is giving us information. Are we going to get what I'm, I'm calling it a reserve study? I see them all the time, where it lists out the various elements and it tells us what the rest of the life is. And, you know, as, as a part of it, because that is so critical in, in in making a decision, you know, just like any home repair, mm -hmm. if, if you know it's got two years. We have a little of that from the stuff with notice. Like they, when they look, when they look, yeah, when they looked at the, the furnace, they're like, oh, these are this furnace is already 20 years past what it should have been. But this part is new and probably has an extra and probably has an extra 20 years. It's always probability, right? It's never right. they right. they're not counting us 20 years. But, but I so I think we have some of that in our existing surveys, and I'm sure they would they would take that and confirm it because that's with but their I first think that step. That's that's critical in helping mm. us, especially the system stuff. decisions. Mm -hmm. Like it's important, like you said, you know, certain things get married together, they get yeah. bundled. Yeah. And it makes sense to do them together. So may, maybe of the bundled elements, 
one of them holds your breath that this doesn't break before we do the project, and two or three of yes. them have longer lives. Mm -hmm. um, but without knowing that information, it makes it hard to have an intelligent conversation. They, they, they couldn't give us that. Give us well, that. I thought that. Yeah, right? but I, that I seems, that's kind okay. of what we yeah. wanted. They will give that. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they're yeah. going to have to give us that because there's they're no gonna give you an because they did that one with the timeline. So that you wouldn't know, you know, like if you if you have a say, say you have a furnace project mm -hmm. and you know your furnace is is on its last leg, it's twenty years past. Then you would hope that when they're showing that kind of timeline, like the, the slide up of the timeline, they would say, you know, he said something about the you know which ones are urgent and need to happen fast. So I think that's exactly it. He just said it in a different way. He didn't call it a reserve study or time left, but um, I think that's exactly what, what he was meaning with that slide because that's something I want to make sure we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because, because it'll make me, you know, not only for this board, but you know. For the next one and the next one and yeah, the next yeah. one. I mean, you know, this is a, a yeah. theoretically, it's a minimum of a 10 year project. Some of these things, if they look at and say, oh, we've got 40 years left on this, well, that can come off the list. And we naturally, so when we sit down, we, we talk about the CIP plan before that you approve before it goes off to the committee. We do that naturally, and I think that's going to be part of this process. So I have a, the spreadsheet where we put in year one through five, and I always say to you, like, you know, this is in year five, and it's probably going to be in year five next year because it's a nicety, mm -hmm. but the project in year one is not a nicety. It's something, it's a priority we have to do because it's a safety thing, or it's going to have bigger implications if you don't fix this. It's not only going to ruin this wall, but it's also yeah. going to ruin the floor, yeah. and then you're going to have pipes freeze. So I think we we do that. I don't know if um, they'll identify, you know, the the boiler right now. We know that, that we replaced the boiler at Center School. It's nine years old. I I think that they would then put that in year ten and say its expected life is around twenty years. That's going to come back around again. So I think that that's just the information where you would put things in, how you in the ten-year plan. If anything, we're leaving in the with anything would need to be repaired in the ten years. It would be in the the ten-year. Well, re repairs yeah. wouldn't end up in CIP. That would be under the normal. Depends operation. on the size of it. Depends on the size of the size of the project. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would really want to be able to differentiate between. Necessity, hundred percent, and it would be nice, or well, you know, like there's there's degrees of what's absolutely necessary and what you know is in dreamland. Um, Do you think it's going to be hard to tell? You know, with some of the mechanical stuff or or some of the pairings, it may make a whole lot of sense to do something that seems. On the surface, unnecessary, mm -hmm. but do it at the same time as something else. You know, something that maybe can go out fifteen years, but when you're if you're replacing the tile in this room, but you know there's radiant flooring underneath, if you know that you're going to you know hold off or do it at the same time right. because you don't want to rip it up twice. Right, and I that think that's sense. what we're trying to. Right, we're trying yeah, to yeah. trying to balance all of those competing and, and uh, parts of the. Yeah. So and you you do need some sort of prior type study, such as what QAM can do for you. It's not going to help you in your timeline for this for next for July one twenty four, right? It's not going to help you for that. Um, unless we know some information through our early discussions, if you got in with them early enough, you might know by December or January to say if they could help you prioritize some things. I mean, look at let's face it, you walk the building, you know the roofs are a priority and ventilation is a priority. There's there's millions right there. So we know we've got probably a couple of years covered and that those projects then come out of their evaluation but getting into beyond that you need a professional to evaluate these things and that's what um that's what they would be doing that's kind of what, what Fryer did um and that's if you want the professional estimator you don't want someone to have to go you know when i call matt jensen and steve polino and say 
I needed three quotes for this to put on the CIP plan. Those people are fed up with us because they don't want to give us quotes anymore because they know we're not going to fund it. It's just a number for a chart, right? Um, and so if we can get an estimator who can do that for each of the projects and then through feedback, through community, staff, board of ed, you then can prioritize. And he was talking about that, about prioritizing what you're really looking for. And my personal feeling, Donna, is I think you're going to have to spend millions of dollars before you even think about moving a wall. Um, and the moving the wall would have to be something that really made sense for something that was really valuable to us, not just that would be a nice idea to do. Um, I just think that, that you know, it, it would come naturally. The harder years to me would be the years out beyond three. Anything beyond year three. But we need to know from them, what are those projects? You know, I mean, we just put new unit ventilators in center school. What's the life expectancy of those? When would you expect them to go back on the cycle? We can, I think that work with Claude and stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, even though we're looking for a 10 year CIP plan, you know, the first few years are going to be more obvious things that need to happen right away. And then there's, you know, the surprise breakage you get in year five that, you know, even though it had 20 years left on it, it's dead and we got to replace it anyway. So, so right. no matter what we do, even if it's, it, even though we're hoping that at the end of this process, we have a 10 year CIP plan, we have to realize that there has to be flexibility and that's why we sure. revisit it every year. But I would hope that as a town, we would start looking at longer than three year windows. So when I, the studies that I look at tend to be 20, 25 year studies. Because certain things like roofs, bricks, the point is painting that stuff like that. Um, so maybe we're looking at a 10 year CIP thing. But I would want it to be clear that there may be things with longer lives. We're not trying to squish everything into 10 years. Oh, right, but right, we right, need right. to prioritize. It's almost like in the ten, 10, years. ten years, and then, then the last column is, and don't forget, these are things. These are things well, for the next ten little. years well, that you need to have on the list. Well, right. Like things. your septic tank is, is is only good for so far. Make sure you've got. So there would be like a. There's certain things, yeah, yeah, yeah. that get that replaced. Say, I'm making this up every ten years. Mm -hmm. So if it was replaced three years ago, I'd want to see it in year seven. And right. then reminder for your seven. But if it had a 15 year life, you'd want it in that last column for the future to say, don't forget in 2032, you've got this gigantic septic replacement issue coming up on the horizon after that. So kind of a kind of like a, what's on the horizon. So would that yeah. also be included in the information we provide? Because I'm I not sure. could ask for that if it were. Well, I'm not yeah. sure if that's what they envision providing us based on the current. I mean, it's typical that you do a 10 year plan that is more typical, but what you put beyond that, when we have equipment, like that's how we use our, 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 um, M4 book. You know, we yeah. knew our exhaust, the age of the exhaust stands. And so we said, Hey, that's starting to break. If we can we do two at a time, can we fix it? And COVID hit, we did a bunch of them. So, do we already have a lot of this information for the mechanicals? We have they don't some. Have to really do yes, we have some of that. Um, well, you know, some of the bigger things, it's it's the actual cost to to replace some of the things that we just you know to redo all the cabinetry and all the classrooms and all the plumbing, which is chips broken, PVC. That's, oh, yeah, but you do that right, what's that going to cost? We don't have that right now. Um, and it's not that every space needs it, but those are the things that need to be identified. You know, the the window caulking that we just did at Center School that made a big difference, that should be part of our evaluation at all school. You don't necessarily need to replace windows if you do that. You can buy more time. And if you can buy another 10 years, it's worth the $20,000, right? As opposed to, he was talking about PCBs, the windows in the upper wing at center school. You need to plan on a PCB project when you do those upper, those single pane windows. That would be the time. And this is the point of the thoughtfulness of the project. And I think this is where he starts getting into Ed's facts to say, 
Do you need a, that's a huge window snap up away. Do you need a window that size? Could you come to a smaller window? If you're going to take out that window, is that a time where you would want to put a jog out to add a space? Look, those are things you would consider. It doesn't mean you would do it, but because if you were going to change the size of that gap, that would be a time you'd start to consider those projects. So, so I think the question before us is, do we go back out for another round of RFPs or do we go with this um, to move ahead? Not that we were making the decision, right. but for the recommendation right. back to the full board and another week or two. So um, if we were gonna go out again, we could go out now. We don't have to wait until October 11th, right? No, we don't. Yeah, we don't have to wait until October no. 11th to reissue it. We would give but them a notice that we were going back out. Is there a risk that we lose QA and M if we go back out? Sure. There's a risk they come back more expensive. There's. I can't speak to why we got one bid because that package is seen by those. Their business basically, you know, they have somebody they can, who looks every they single joke day. This, but they, they wake up in the morning, they go to work, they and as they drink their coffee, they're looking at what's newly posted. That's what they do, and then they're pushing that out. So the fact that we only got one, I'm a little worried about. Um, two, we've done some RFPs on several different projects and not funded them. And I worry that are people starting to look us up, look at Wilmington and go, so they put out RFPs and we're gonna spend time on this, but they're not gonna do anything about it. I worry a bit about that. Uh, it is fair because they, you can see, some of it's lock, stock and barrel. Like some of their report is just the way it is, um, but it takes them, it's time, right? Their their time is money. And so every time they have to go out and interview or- or you know, here for a meeting. Right, That that matters. Um, my feeling is if that cost came in double, I actually thought it was going to be six figures. I'm surprised at the cost, and I know we were concerned, and, and you know, looking at what they are going to do, do they have enough hours into it? Their cost is where it is right now, I think, because they've already done some work at all. If they had not done some of the evaluation through the SBC, their cost would have been higher. So they already have information yeah. that they're not going to have to replicate because he's if that is finger tips. Does he still have to do more? Sure, he does. I also was thinking that when you quote a job, that it's kind of based on the, the timing. Like, oh, we don't have anything going right now. I know we can afford these people for this team to do this piece. But if it's postponed another two to four months and it's a winter thing, they may have other irons in the fire. So, yeah. like, you know, like if I for work, if I quote a job, it's based on the timeline I expect to do the work. So that's why I asked if we might lose them entirely because they might not be free in right. a future time. And I wouldn't want someone who's just doing hotels. That is one thing I heard today in their interview that CES is educational. Their um, their person doing their estimations is educational. QA and M, he's got the architecture side. He, it's educational. There, you look at some of these other firms and. They'll do a university building, then they'll do a um, an office building in Hartford, then they'll do you know a park. I, I just I I worry about um, missing that piece of it. Is there a chance that there's any money left in the SBC that could be used to help pay for this? So I think the SBC is um, going to return. I think it's going to be around fifty thousand. I don't know that exact number because they're finishing minutes now. So that definitely could be something that is there was I don't think it's in the but I agree. SBC can't fund it because it's not part of their work. Right. right. And they're doing right. their they final the money. But if that money's coming does get, back, does that get returned to go back to the town, the town and it would not impact your um hundred thousand, I'm sorry, your million. Because that was the you, I think the intent. You don't have this in your budget, right? You would have to go to the town and say, "Please call a town meeting." Uh, you go through CI, um, the board of finance. You make the request. If they approved it, they would send it to town meeting or selectmen. They call town meeting. You could. There's potential for where that money comes back to, um, and it's not just the money from the SBC. 
the money that comes back in the pocket of money that the Board of Finance has access to and can approval over, they could very easily say, we're just going to approve this based upon the fund that's coming out. I don't know that they have to send it to town meeting. If it's out of the million, absolutely have to. Okay, so that might be something you could, is there a way to inquire? Sure, so that, you could find out. So that we know because- SBC's on their final report, we're probably, gosh, I hope a couple weeks away from the final, all the minutes are being uh, finalized. The budget will be finalized and the only bill we have outstanding is to pay for the minutes. And then the report is meant to be published at that meeting, and that's it. But regardless of whether the money is coming from, like you know, something that's given back or not, we need this information. We can't move ahead without it. So right. the question at hand is really: um, is there is there is is there is is it is it more than just a feeling that that something isn't sitting right? Is there is there uh, no. is there a reason to go back out and delay the delay the process? Because if we do have to go out to town meeting and we don't have bids back, we're bumping into Thanksgiving. It's no, going right. to get uglier later. So no, I'd I, rather get them out sooner if we can get this process rolling. Uh, but I'm not saying that. I, I think for the cost of the bid, it's worth it. I mean, honestly, just for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, again, it's just it, more than likely for me, it's because we only got one and I'm approaching this in a vacuum and I have nothing to be like, okay, we am going to you, I'm going to you. And, you know, that's yeah, not with, with inexperience, it's like that's how I would make that comparison by mm -hmm. talking to other firms. But I, I, I don't, there was nothing that stood out as like a, a red flag lately. I wasn't, yeah. nothing really took me aback. You no, know, but, you so, know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't propose delaying this especially and i think it would be actually a lot more palatable to the town if we could somehow convert that sbc money and it wouldn't really cost any. i'd say it wouldn't cost any, but you know it's no, yeah. not yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. i mean i mean we have to we have to spend the money yes. to get the information no matter what it comes. Yeah. so um i think are you saying that there's anything that that would make you say yeah. no we shouldn't move ahead do you remember how much the fire spending cost off the top of my head, I don't. I don't. They're they what they're proposing. They did they did something different. More. Yeah. I mean, just that RFP was one page. The prior report. The 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 RFP that went out to to solicit bids was one page. So we had a lot more expectations in this for what we're looking for. Um, and the RP or, or the um, the response from fire, it was it was decent. There was a lot of information in it, and I think it's going to be if you approve this, you not not approve. If you send this to the board and the whole board, board approves it for request, you get this. You're the one driving this. So if you and I, I, I heard him say that tonight, and this was really important. If you get to a point without blowing open walls, which makes me a little nervous <laughs> while school is in session, right? I wanted to get a sense of, yeah. of how thorough they were. If, right. if you got to a point where they said, look it, this is as far as we can take this. If you want to take it to the next level, we want you to understand this is what it would take. You at least can consider that. It's not within their dollar amount. It would be additional funds. But then they could also give up. We think there's a 10% chance of this. That's why you might want to consider. Or we think there's a 90% chance of this. Right. We think you should consider this additional yeah. investment. They could give us information to help us make that decision at that time, should we need to. And I appreciated what I deemed as them being prudent in not wanting to test the wazoo out of everything so that our hand doesn't get forced to make that. changes yes yep. premature. absolutely yeah. okay so i think what i'm hearing is that we're going to accept the bid and propose to the full board at the next meeting um to uh, move ahead with the kind of the the whatever the next step move ahead is. with the the formulation of a contract or, or whatever we need to do to, to get a Figure formal motion for the funding. Yeah. Because we're not going to find the contract, but whatever the, the, the wording of the stuff that goes to the. Um, Thank you. 
um, has to be specific. So I don't know what that wording would be. So I guess what I'm asking you, Phil, is I'll have do the research. So if there's something yeah. specific, we have to test next. <laughs> Get the wording right. So I don't want to delay it. And I'll find, find out from Donna to, you know, the different funding options, okay. what the Board of Finance could could or could not fund. Right. If it's, you know, in the kind of lay out a timeline process. Okay. Um, so we want to, we, we would want to be at the Board of Finance meeting, their meeting after the Board of that. So that way, um, you know, they'd have a heads up. And, and just that we also clarify things for the vocabulary. So we're, it is what it is, but that we all know that that's what it is. And we're all on the same page as far as yeah. what must be what we'd like. That would be, that would be in both the contract that we would sign it down the road, as well as, um, in the expectation that we can well, give them afterwards, because this document this, starts. This document's done, mm -hmm. and I think that when we get to that point, that's a, a conversation that we have to have yeah. with them about the the specific scope of the project in greater. Yeah, because we said this is not the scope of the project and what we want. We have a different scope yeah. of the project. So, um, in in that was, process of so up with what this we was want. this was yeah. a lot when I was looking. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had some concerns. Okay. Um, let me just yeah. add one more thing here. Please. So let's say this, we, we recommend this, this gets approved. They start doing their work. They come back with the report and we look at it and it's not to use the term useless, but just look at it and be like, this isn't, we either need more or we need something different. I, I, where do we go? I did, I that happen. Where are we okay. going from there? Just, just working with companies like this in the past, you're going to see this well in advance, what your final report is going to look like. You're going to help craft it based upon your feedback. Okay. So if you look at it and you like a certain layout, they will present something and say, this is what we've done in the past and we'll go, well, that does work for us. We want it so that there's a project, a cost, what are you going to group together? This, the layout can be driven by us. Okay. So it doesn't... So for example, that's why stuff. I asked that one where they had the different colors. I was like, is this like you're going to give us one page for school? Like that was kind of what I was thought I was seeing. And he, he wasn't actually saying it was different criteria. And he could do that for each project, that same set of criteria for each one. And we could ask for that level of detail because that's the thing I worry about is that that they're not going to give us the level of detail that I would want. Yeah. And so, and I, I'd rather have too much detail yeah. than too little. So with that, they have the detail. If it's not detailed enough, we go back and we say, we need you to add the detail. Okay. I also want to make sure that they treat this as one unit. When they're making their recommendations, we think, yeah. think yes. If, if there's 10 projects in each building, it may not be one, 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 or 10 and 10. Yeah. The, the ordering is what makes sense for maintaining and preserving the asset. Um, the other thing is when they're individual dealing with the escalations and things like that. If you have two projects that cost the same and they're same priority, but this one is gonna double in cost much faster than this one, well, let's do the one that's right. gonna double in cost sooner. They should be able to prioritize. You know, so, to help that. with the prioritize. So that would, the question that raises though, is that when we have continued consulting hours with them when those questions come up after they give us their final report there's going to be a level of questions that come up saying if we have to decide this we need these other two or three points and they might they have an hourly rate that okay so, so even if to. even if we yeah. finish we could still get that information two years no, down the road because it's be something can. like they've got that estimator person that they work with and we might need I something really be I think that that would be part of the original thing okay. when they're making their recommendations, even though it's the board's ultimate decision, and there may be other if things. If it were a huge, significant piece, like, you know, if it, this price is going to double because it's all wood, buy it now. You know, so there might be Those like, no things piece. I would want to yeah. know. Okay. Right. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Okay. okay. So I think we're ready to adjourn. Am I right? Okay, I move that we adjourn this meeting. 8.19 p.m. Do you want to maintain a second? No. No, because it's just committee. Okay. Standing forever. Thank you for...